Happy Wax Plant Wednesday, everyone. I am really excited for this video just because it's about my propagations and like some repots. It's basically an update video, but like a Hoya edition. So y'all know that I've been posting weekly on Wednesday for a Wax Plant Wednesday video. I'm gonna look at plants that I propagated that I repotted and I'll show you how they're doing today. So we have updates ranging from like a month mark to a two month mark and yay, I love this. I love seeing the progress. I love seeing things grow. So I'm gonna start off with my Hoya silver dollar. So about a little over two months ago, I took all the propagations I had that were living in perlite and I basically put them in this planter of pond. I don't remember how much, I think maybe there were six cuttings in there and i put it on this like weird trellis where I, I put like an in-between trellis to see how like the leaves would grow um and i was hoping because there was more support and it wasn't a harsh incline there was going to be some leaves growing from that that place so the before okay so let's take a look oh okay it's not one of the short ones so here are the roots okay future kevin zoom in look at these roots i hope it's in focus but it is a large root system. Yeah, they all have great root systems. Like, again, future Kevin Zoom in. So they all kind of look like this. And I kind of think though that's a, that the silver dollar, it just needs to really grow that root system before it pushes out any growth. <laughs> I'm gonna feel so bad if they're not in focus. Okay, so this is what I did with the small trellis here. I just zip tied and bent it in a way. So I just want to offer some support for the tendril to push out leaves here. I don't know, we'll see if it happens. But look at all these. Okay, look at this y'all. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm just adding some nutrient solution. And so here's the update. <laughs> it, it, it still looks kind of um, bare, but look at where I put that tendril, there are two leaves. Now, I never really do these kind of trellises. I was just trying it out for the first time and I am pleasantly surprised. There is another tendril. You can see that the tendrils did grow. So there are a couple. I didn't put it all the way up here. And just from this experience and some others that I'm, I'm probably gonna cut the taller trellises for these wire trellises that I got from Crystal Star Nursery. It's because I kind of feel like they're a little bit too tall. So that, or I might bend them in a way where it makes the whole thing shorter because I have to just kind of push it through the wire shelf. And so I, I kind of have to like do it very delicately. There are new leaves on the way, right over there, right over there, over here. So there's a bunch of vines on the way and I'm very excited. Um, I don't think there's been any, no, I all the cuttings survived. And I've said this before, perlite to pond, it's usually a very easy transition. Yeah, I don't know, this Hoya is gorgeous. It's one of my favorites. I love how, you know, you get the non-silvery parts that are like green, but at the same time, it kind of has like this shininess. Oh, and then they're thick, like they're really gorgeous. I'm really happy. So ever since I did that video, I've had her under a grow light. The grow light's kind of off to the side, but it's still kind of at this level. Definitely bright and direct light definitely like a thousand to two thousand foot candles i would say and yeah i'm curious to see once it really establishes itself because it's only been a couple months will this take off every time i've grown my silver dollar before it was in lekka and i didn't have a trellis on it so it pushed out a few leaves just because it was under really bright light and then it would just push out this long tendril just because it wasn't supported and i've said this before the silver dollar you really do need to support it in order for it to uh, push out new leaves and and I guess I'll show you the one in Lekka as well. So this was the mama and she's doing okay. Uh, wire trellis, the same as um, the one in Pawn. This is just one plant though. So there are a few vines that kind of branch from different places, but I'm very happy to see that she is starting to push out new leaves. Look at that. It is, I don't know. These leaves are just so beautiful. Ooh, these are new. Oh my God. So I want to show this too, just to kind of compare and, and share my opinions about growing these in Pond versus Lekka. It's still kind of early, but so far they're kind of growing at the same rate. I know I asked before, like, is the silver dollar slow? Because I found that they're like slow to moderate growth as opposed to like a fast grower, like the Polyner, for example. But yeah, wow, these baby leaves are actually like so pretty. They are everything. And again, with the one in pawn, I'm just gonna keep 
wrapping around and just hopefully um, get a full plant. So that's really exciting. So this is the two month update from the, uh, I guess, repot from Perlite into Pawn and she's doing just fine. So that is the first update. How exciting. Okay, side note y'all. My boyfriend went to St. Lawrence Market here in Toronto. Oh, these are my favorite. These are my favorite. I don't know if they're called Danish's pastries. They're cherry. I don't think they're cheese. Cherry yogurt, I think. Anyhow, I just need to show you because I'm obsessed. Oh, are you kidding? Oh, they smell so good. I'm gonna have to eat like four today. I love how he gets me like seven, but I do have to say that they're only like at their best the day of. But yeah, that's gonna be my lunch. Okay, second plant, Hoya Matil Splash. So I just put it in a planter and I'm utilizing the trellises that are from North Shore Tropicals. They're the clear acrylic trellises. And yeah, I just wanna show you like two months worth of growth on a trellis. Um, I know she already had tendrils that I kind of clipped onto the trellis, but um, she is much fuller. I know I've showed this so many times recently, but I thought I'd include her. Okay, let's see. Oh. Are you kidding? Okay, now I'm gonna use these clips just to guide like whoever's long enough. Oh my God, I think I love it. But the trellis looks so good. Are you kidding? This looks so good. Oh, I'm gonna love this when this fills up. And this is why I felt okay with it because the main vine had the best genetics. So that's this vine kind of at the top here. You can see that the genetics are like perfect. And so I'm hoping from different nodes here, they'll push out a new growth. Specifically I see because I did have to train the rest of the vine down. I usually see new growths pop up from the top ones here because if we know Hoyas, they always prefer to go up. So there's probably going to be new growths coming from this node here, which is perfect because it has amazing splash. Maybe this one, same thing. <gasps> okay. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know why I'm so excited. Here is the after. She is so much more full. Um, and then, you know, there is additional branching that has splash. I know I show this all the time, um, but look how full it is uh, compared to what she was before. So happy. And you could see like there are tendrils going all over the place. Uh, these are new branches from the top. Again, Hoyas will always try to find a way to grow up. Um, if you force a tendril down, they'll push out new growth out of a different node. And that's why I love Hoya so much. So yeah, this side's kind of facing the grow light. If I rotate her, you kind of get like the more bare side where the leaves are like. She has filled it up so beautifully. I'm so happy that I decided to do this, especially with these clear trellises. I really like them. Come on now. Like imagine it's gonna, I want it to like take over where like it covers the, the center also. Like we're gonna, we're gonna get to that level. So yeah. Absolutely love. Such amazing genetics in the vine. Yeah, I love her so much. Oh yeah, Archboldiana out of variegated. Now I had two cuttings that were rooting in perlite. Um, I've said it before that I find these Hoyas take a longer time to push out growth, specifically leaves. But people have told me that once it establishes itself, like grows a root, a root system, feels secure in the planter, it'll start taking off. And so today's a two month update. Um, I think I put two of the propagations in a pot of pond, again, with one of those clear trellises. Look at that beautiful root system. Oh guys, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I know I'm usually very excited about these things, but like, I don't know, maybe it's because like, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's been a challenge because they've rooted like, okay, but I just like want a specimen that is full and one that grows fast. And so hopefully I see that with this one in pawn. So cute. Oh, on this cute little trail. Are you kidding? Okay, got it. This is like so cute. Oh, I'm not focused. Look at this. Look at, I don't know. I don't know. They're cute. And there's not much to show, but I'm really happy. So one vine pushed out this leaf and then this pair right over here. You could see, unfortunately, the tip is all dried up. The reason for this, I have this so close to a grow light. I've said this before where I firmly believe this one needs a lot of light more than other Hoyas, just growing the 
regular green Archibald Deanna. Needs a lot of light, needs a lot of support. Um, so because of that, I have the grow light right here and the tip grew into the grow light. And so that's why she dried up. And unfortunately that, but again, there's other notes. It'll probably be at the top as well, but we'll see. And then the second one over here have these two uh, on this side. You have a couple leaves here. They're beautiful. And yeah, that's about it. I mean, she's still doing her thing. She's still happy. And so I'm so curious to see how this grows because y'all know the mama, it took it took a little bit. Um, I Obviously the mama pushed out these leaves over here, which are beautiful. So yeah, that's the update. Again, right under grow light in La Chouza Pond. And so yeah, what a cutie. Okay, the next plant is the Hoya Carii album Marginata. I didn't cut it or repot it, but I basically put another bamboo trellis uh, over the existing one just because it started growing a lot. And so I just needed some way to support it. Um, and so this was my solution. Uh, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Look at this tendril. The thing with Carii specifically, that I have experienced is they do not like being trained downwards. So I wish I like paid attention to this before. Give me a sec, you could rest on the gray ghost. Okay y'all, how do we feel? I put this bamboo trellis just here, zip tie it to the existing, Okay, y'all, I am really hoping because there are, I mean, I killed one over here. Uh, there is one, two, three, four parts on this vine that don't have leaves, that have the potential to push out leaves. So I'm hoping that should be okay. There's not much that has happened, but this is a two month update since I put that trellis. Man, this is a beauty. This is such a beautiful Hoya. So here she is. <laughs> You can see that, I don't know, like, I was it at this stage? I forgot how long, or maybe it was longer, and she just didn't have this leaf. So she's only pushed out on this tendril, this one leaf. I'm trying to be so careful because there's actually a second leaf down here, and I broke it. I broke it, I was moving things, and then I saw sap, and I was like, wait, what happened? So that happened. So there were two leaves. This is the only one that's surviving right now. Nodes that there is different potentials over here. And you could see that the tendril is just doing a thing. Um, I'm actually waiting for this one to grow a little longer. Uh, at that point, when it's not too short, I'm probably gonna just link it like this and just so it could go around in a circle like that. There are like new vines that started developing too, like this one. So this is a new leaf. Sometimes I see this black when the waterings are inconsistent. So there was a time where this dried out and then I watered it. Sometimes I see this and then it disappears. Not all the time. I'm thinking it's more water related, if anything, inconsistent watering. So that's a new vine. There's a little baby. Wow, right there. Do you see her down here? So these leaves are new, but that's cute. So she's doing well. Um, I was scared because I was giving this Hoya the maximum light possible. She was under two grow lights and she was against my south facing window. Um, we were in the transition between like summer, spring to summer. And so I was scared moving her to my west facing window, but I do have a couple grow lights off to the side that are on for 14 hours. So I think she's okay. Let me know because I, I'm still not sure like what lighting to give um, my Hoya Carii. I've always had the experience that you need to give these ones a lot of light. And so that's what I've done. And I mean, she's pushed out this much growth. Now uh, west facing window, two grow lights off to the side. She's still growing, but I'd love to hear your experiences with this. Um, but yeah, that's the two month update with the Hoya Carrier Albo Marginata. Hoya Latifolia Snow Queen. Now, if y'all remember, I had three different propagations. They all had like one to two leaves and they were in uh, separate cups. Since, <laughs> this is what I thought, since they all had good genetics with a splash and just based on my experience with propagating, I was like, oh, like this is gonna be a no brainer. The new leaves are gonna push out splashy leaves. <laughs> look at, look at this one. So there's only one that's pushed out leaves and it's this one. So you can see beautiful again, but they're just green. I said I was gonna wait 
for a new leaf to see if the splash continued. You can see it's green. I might wait for one more set. If that one's green, I'm gonna chop her all the way back to the two leaves. And this one was very interesting because it kind of went against what I was saying before when it comes to the genetics in the node. And obviously like you're not in there, so you don't know, you know, if the new growth is gonna push out any splash. But like, come on, there's two leaves one on each side one of them is this one right over here so like the splashiest of them all and the second one is this one so it confused me it was very fascinating to me and so i'm curious to see if the next set is going to be splashy and interestingly the other two so single leaf cutting over there the second single leaf cutting is this one beautiful but zero sign of new growth now, I'm a little worried. I, I know that this one specifically on this side, right there, you can see that she's already pushed out uh, new growths at the node. So I know Hoyas have the ability to push out a lot more from that point, uh, but I'm starting to worry just because there's nothing there. It's, it's the same thing with this one. So this is the second one. They're rooted okay. I mean, even in the repot, they're, re they're rooted fine. But yeah, I just like don't know and it interests me oh i broke the leaf it's okay it's just a green leaf but i'm very <laughs> i'm very interested to see um if the splashiness will continue hoya australis lisa so i took a few i think i took four four or five uh cuttings of my giant hoya australis lisa it was time to just cut her down get rid of the rest start from the beginning i, I grew it up a trellis is really massive actually um, but initially I put these cuttings in water against my west facing window and it was during like the peak of the summer so so much light specifically in the afternoon and evening. It grew water roots, I threw her into pond and I just stuck her under grow light. They have grown roots and so I'm gonna put them in pond and I'm gonna try because I've seen this I'm gonna try just letting it trail. Is that a good idea? I'm actually shocked. It's it's probably been like six weeks okay how come none of these have roots oh uh, there's one right there i guess that's one root okay this one has roots this single leaf here has roots like that some of these might have not been touching the water because this one doesn't have roots either this one has a new growth and new roots at the bottom here yay okay and then this one already has a new growth with these two leaves and a beautiful root system Oh, there's one more actually. This one here and these roots here. Just adding a layer of pawn. Again, I've only grown this Australis Lisa in Lekka, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this one grows and I'm gonna try trailing this time. So yeah, y'all saw that half of these are not even rooted. I'm not worried at all. I'm guessing that there might have been a point where like the stems weren't even touching the water and like the water level went down. Or maybe because it was just a west facing view, it wasn't getting enough hours of light. Um, but I mean, y'all saw that half of them were rooted and so yay. She is so adorable and it's just fitting because we're kind of like sneaking into fall. And like every time I look at the Australis Lisa, I always feel fall vibes, even though it's not quite like the fall colors. I don't know, do y'all feel that way too? I always feel this way when I see these leaves. So here she is. So look at all the little like baby growths here. So all of them has pushed, well, yeah, all of them has pushed out new growth. Even the one, this one was the one that I don't think was rooted but I stuck it in anyways. I kept the substrate really wet. And finally, and finally, you can see those new leaves over here. The rest, no issues. You can see that this is absolutely stunning over here. Third one here looks great. Number four, ooh, look at that red. Number four, so pretty. Five and six. Oh, these ones are so cute. Are you kidding? These two? Oh, so there's six in here. How exciting. Oh my gosh, I love, I just love watching like plants grow. Like, oh my God. This Hoya is in one of the sunniest places. So closer to the floor of my shelf, in the corner where the south and west facing window meets, and then there's a grow light also. I'm very excited to see this grow. 
I know a lot of people were telling me, because I said before I wanted to try this trailing, I'm really curious to see how this will trail. Um, I've never watched this trail just because mine has always grown up trellises. And so, yay. Okay, let's jump into the Hoya Silver Lady. Wow. Same as the silver dollar. I was very curious to watch this grow in pond because my mother plant was growing in Lekka and she's like doing beautifully. I might grab her just to show her as well. But, you know, propagated in perlite, I transferred her into a big planter of pond. I put one of those clear acrylic trellises and I really want to bring out the sun stressing or like the pinks and purples in the leaves. So I actually did put this planter right under a grow light. Oh, these have been in perlite for six months. Um, they've been doing great. All rooted along the stem there. Beautiful roots. I'm excited for this one. I don't know if y'all are excited as well. I think this is gonna ignite the excitement again with this plant. Are you kidding? You know, I'm looking in the screen over there and it doesn't do it justice. Like I'm looking at it in person and it is really like pink purple, especially these leaves. I don't know if it's picking up, but uh, I think I mentioned before I was like, oh y'all, I'm I'm kind of falling out of love with the silver lady. Uh, just because there's so many silvery Hoyas this sun stressing or whatever you want to call it is beautiful though the jets are still going the jets are still going yeah i don't know it is like i don't the mix looks so pretty they're all doing okay no casualties here's the one that's and because i want to see these colors i made it a point to find a place right under girl light so because of that i had to just strategically put it in like that so this trellis kind of peeks through top of the wire shelf these plants are so close. <gasps> Whoa! It's the last weekend of the Canadian National Exhibition, the c &E, and so they're doing their practice. I think it's only practice today. Anyhow, sorry for the jet sounds, y'all. Ooh, I didn't see this. Look at this. Oh my god, look at that. This is the mama. So she has been living in Lekka for quite a while now, and she's doing just fine. You could see that because she's more off to the side of the girl light, she's getting like kissed a little bit with the stressed leaves over here. Uh, but you can see that the other leaves don't have that. Kind of want to chop this one. I really like how this one's looking, especially because there's more than one plant in here, whereas this one is just one plant um, that has kind of just like vined like at many places. But I'm really, really loving what this looks like. Uh, okay, so that is the two month update. It's this one. <laughs> this is the two month update of the Hoya Zhaoji 003, also known as Silver Lady. The next plant is the Hoya Tequila Sunrise. I put all, I mean, there's a common theme here where I put all my perlite propagated cuttings into pond in, a, in one planter just to achieve kind of a floor plant. I wasn't really happy with my mother, like the one that was living in Lekka. So I just decided to propagate it and the planes, here she is. Um, she doesn't really look that different. I don't know how many plants are in here, maybe six, um, but there is some new growth just popping out. That is a new leaf there. Oh, I think this one's new. Do you see this? The only thing with this one, she's probably been getting only medium light. And so I think that's another reason why, pond just dropped. I think that's another reason why she's not growing as quickly. I, I've been struggling with space and like where to put plants. And so this one right now, I think I found a better place for it where it's getting like medium to bright and direct. But yeah, she still looks gorgeous in, in this planter. I might get rid of um, or propagate the one that I have in Lekka, which is my mother plant. Uh, that's the update with her. Not much to say. I do need to give it more light. Um, I think she would love that. And so yeah, that's her. Hoya Serpents. This one I'm like the most excited about just cause I mean, it's the serpents. The leaves are so cute. The texture in the leaves are just everything. And I really want a trailing one. And that's why I made this other planter. Um, so six weeks ago, I did propagate a few vines off my mama, who's gigantic. I'm gonna show her again because, oh my gosh, she's like, just push out so many new growths everywhere. 
guess I'll just like push the cuttings through and then fill the waterline all the way to the top. And I'm just making cuttings that are like this size. This small little cute stem. Okay, let's pop them in. Oh my God. I don't know. This is so cute. They look so cute. Okay. But are we down to the last vine? We are. Do you see the water? It is just like at the surface. Um, okay, so one last check. There are some that are like not super secure. But anyhow, I'll just keep an eye on this. Right under grow light. Again, 2,000 to 3,000 foot candles. And then, yeah. But I don't know if y'all remember. I just like, it was cuttings with one or two leaves. And I put a bunch uh, in pawn. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about my strategy when it comes to propagating, especially when the propagations of Hoyas have a stem that is like so short. You need to make sure these stay consistently wet. And so my strategy, because I knew I was going to get busy, was to fill the reservoir all the way to the top. Top, top, top. Uh, touching the leaves. Touching the leaves. Doing that in conjunction with having it under grow light 14 hours 3000 foot candles that for me works and it's worked I'll, I'll show you more after this because there's more but that i'm so happy that i don't think i think there might have only been one yeah okay i save the leaf because i want to show you there was one that died so i save the leaf because y'all know that i show you everything on this channel it's hard to see because there's a lot in here Uh, oh, a bunch of water just fell. Okay, hold on. Hold on, all of the stars have faded away. So that, sorry, the plane. So that kind of shows you how I'm still keeping the reservoir pretty high. I'm just going to empty the reservoir and just refill it. Um, just so I don't spill anymore. I just want to show you. Do you see... And the new growth is the lighter green. So obviously you can see the darker green, which um, for the most part uh, is coming from the cuttings. But you can see here, like this is brand new. All of this right over here. Look at these babies right over there. Um, yep, that's new. You can see that's the beginnings over here. So, I don't know. I know it's still so small, uh, but I just want to show you my method and that it works. This is actually pretty good. <laughs> like, in my experience, the Serpents is a fast grower. Um, I know other people have, you know, a harder time with it, but it, for me, grows like a weed. It really does. So here is the update with that. I need to show you the mother plant. I didn't think this plant could get more full but because i made cuttings it promoted new growth at different nodes and so there was just multiple branching look <laughs> and yeah again you can see with the bright green you can see the new growths it's like really embedded in here blending in with the with the new plant and like now there's more up here like she's really just branched you can see like those tiny tiny new leaves Oh my god. <laughs> do you see what I mean? <laughs> and I'm gonna do this again because I am so shook by this, but future Kevin put in a picture when I got it, I think two years ago, she had three leaves. She had three leaves and I was a little scared. I was like, okay, everyone is like talking about how like you need a lot of humidity when it comes to growing the serpent. You know, kind of stuck to my guns, put her in like a pond sub substitute, blasted her with light. I haven't changed how much light I give her. I give her a lot. This one right now is kind of getting south facing window on one side, grow light on the other side. So a bunch of light. And yeah, I, do you, do you see this? <laughs> I don't know y'all. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'll talk about it more with the other plants. This is a question I get all the time. At what point do you start decreasing the water level? Um, because like they've grown root systems, evidently, like you can see that there's new growth. There must be new roots, which is true. I still keep the water pretty high. Like I go past the maximum. You all saw that I was spilling water. Um, so it is still kind of up there but maybe a little bit less like up here as opposed to the maximum, which is down here, which is just wild to me. I don't know. I feel like the Serpents likes wet conditions. Fuchsia Kevin Zoom in. They're doing a thingy. Uh, 
Okay, now we're going into, I think, th I don't know if it's three, three plans that I propagated about a month ago. So I'm going to start off with the Hoya Ching Hengensis. Y'all know that she was on Death's Door. Um, this is the mama, and this was, y'all know that she was like really long and that I really chopped down those vines into single leaf cuttings for the most part, I think. So mama is still here. She's doing fine. I'm just going to pop them into one of these. I'm usually just like limiting it to two leaves. So I'm just doing that, pushing it through. Look at that, look how cute. So I'm gonna put the water really to the top. Do you see, yeah, do you see that water? Super, super high, just cause the stems are so short. A lot of these cuttings, like they're not really in the pond. So I just kind of want to overcompensate. Okay y'all, this is a, uh, <laughs> It's a clear saucer. This is what I decided to do. So I'm probably just gonna fill the saucer, put as many cuttings in, just because like you get more surface area without using too much pond, just because it's like so shallow. And then I'm just gonna try to like spray it. Obviously, because there's less pond, it's gonna dry out faster. Um, so the plan is get as many cuttings in here, you know, depending what survives, what doesn't survive. And yeah, I mean, once they grow new roots, that's when I will take, you know, a bunch out and then put it in a new pot i'm feeling these plants and i'm like noticing that the leaves are like extremely floppy okay, i think at this point i'm just like pushing a lot of them out as i push new ones so i'm just kind of doing like a pat down pat down she's pretty much you could see it like ooh. This one looks fantastic. I don't think this one had any casualties. I'm gonna have to dump the water again because she's still full up to the top, but this is the planter. So similar to the serpents, you can see the bright green growths everywhere. Like there, how exciting. So nothing died in this planter, but you can see, I'm so excited for this one new growths everywhere like actually everywhere and the stems were like this short so again it was very important to keep the water level really high at what level am i keeping this i'm still keeping it relatively high because even though there is new growth i just don't know how big that root system is yet so i'm still keeping it relatively high not this high but maybe this high for the pa of ching hungensis y'all know that i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do with all these cuttings. Y'all were gonna yell because I had to throw away some, so I was trying to save as many as possible. So, here she is. Future Kevin, zoom in. I wanted to keep the dead ones to show you that this method doesn't always work. Now, I do wanna say that a lot of this is because the reservoir of this dried out, and I didn't realize. I don't do well if there isn't a lot of space to put any water because it does dry out faster. Um, again, I want to try it out because, you know, you get a lot of surface area. So there was more space to put cuttings, but the only downfall was I couldn't put as much water as I did with this one. And also it was very difficult to kind of gauge how much water was there as opposed to this one. You could see that the indicator is right over here so a lot of it did die there are some new growths like you can see over here that is brand new there's a small little tiny growth here this is new you can see it with the like maroon kind of i don't know what y'all can see i'm going to rotate it you can see like here there's some new growth you can see here there's new growth um and it's really hard to see but there are the beginnings of new plants and that is very exciting. Now I do want to focus on the dead ones. So there are some dead ones. I'm just going to pull them out now that I've showed you. And I'm pretty sure it was because of it drying out. Um, and then the introduction of water. Anytime you have something dry, whether that's a root or stem, like really dry and then you introduce so much water, that's when you get the rot, um, specifically with these propagations. I'm just feeling and just trying to eliminate all the ones that are dead and there's quite a bit 
I wonder why it was all in this cluster. Do you know what? Okay, so because this saucer has legs, which that sounds funny, there were times where it was tipping in one direction. So there was actually more water on this side. Maybe that's why this... I know there's some that survived, but it was all clustered over here. I know these look questionable, but they actually are pushing out new growth. Maybe they could eliminate this leaf. <laughs> that still feels okay. And then if we go down here, you can see a few. Uh, I think there's only like, this leaf is dead, but there's another leaf that's healthy. Sometimes you'll see plants um, killing off one leaf to favor root growth, and that's totally normal as well. This one wasn't even, oh my God, this one wasn't even in the pond. For the most part, it worked, but I would like maybe a deeper um, saucer because you can see how shallow Ooh, the water is dripping. You can see how shallow it is. Fortunately, we did lose all of these, but looking at the bigger picture, lost this much, but look at the other ones that I have here. So that are still alive. I want to get a big chinkungensis again. Y'all know that I grew mine really, really big. Um, but this is like almost more exciting just uh, seeing you know all the little babies and just knowing how fast this grows once the root system is like established in the substrate so yeah that's the update on the chinkungensis okay the last hoya hoya huskuyana outer it how come i keep i always want to say outer variegated it's inner variegated <laughs> okay you look a little naked make a chop here sorry Okay, I'm just gonna go with it. I don't know. There's some that are just like at the surface. And that's why like, if the stems are so short, like that's why it's so important to put the water level so high. Uh, this is the one month update. So I do want to show you the mama. She did so well after I uh, made those propagations because again, like the serpents, she was pushing out all this new growth. And you could see that it's, you know, the pink growths here, all just everywhere. Just, I don't know, this plant is like so beautiful. And then it bloomed twice for the first time. And I was like, you know what? Why is they do appreciate a chop from time to time. Okay, now the propagations, you really can't see anything. Okay, up there, do you see it? That is new growth. And I know it because it's pink. Looking at the planter though, you don't really see that much. But the big thing is they're all still alive. I'm trying to take a closer look. I can see some, but I'm not going to be able to show you. I know this leaf i think was new also but there isn't much to show i'm just glad that they're all alive again doing my assessment feeling the leaves like everyone feels firm water level again because the stems were so short i was keeping it really high i'm still going to keep it at the same level i'm not going to change it and it's right under grow light like right over here probably getting a thousand to three thousand foot candles and so yay i just like can't wait to have another plant like this okay guys i guess that's it just watching these plants grow from cuttings it's just so exciting so fascinating and so i look forward to showing you more updates in the future if you made it to the very end thank you guys so much i greatly appreciate it and i'll see you guys later bye